Okay guys, welcome back to Ashmore Arboretum, and today on Homestead, I'm going to be showing you guys how to can your potatoes. If you remember the other day, I went ahead and I pulled about 100 pounds of potatoes out of the garden, and today we're going to can some of these potatoes. The first thing you have to do is you have to scrub these clean. That is imperative. Some people like to go ahead and peel them. I'm not going to peel them. My kitchen, my rules. So I like the skins. There's a lot of nutrients in the skins. So what you do is you go ahead and get these cleaned up. You, I just use a little scrub brush. Get all the mud and dirt and grime off of them. If there's any bad spots, you cut those out or discard them, depending on how bad it is. And then from here, what we do is just take our potato, take our potato, and you slice it into cubes. And then I have my helper, my little helper here today, and she's loading these jars for me. I have eight quarts behind me, and my canner will hold 14 quarts, so I have to get about six more quarts ready. Oh, put your hand on top of it, babe. Okay, there you go. Now, you want to pack these jars kind of tight, and if you get to the point where you don't have your one inch head space, put your hand on top and just shake. And what that does is that settles them a little bit and you can get a few more pieces in there and these will settle down. But what I've got going behind me is I have a pot of boiling water. All right, sweetheart, that's about enough in that one. I have a pot of boiling water that we'll put on these jars. But right now, we're going to continue to fill up all of our quarts. Stay tuned and we'll be right back. Okay guys, welcome back. And what I've done now is I've got my canner and I've put about two and a half inches of water in it. And the next thing we need to do is since we do have hard water, I have to add a little bit of just white distilled vinegar, about two tablespoons to the water. And what that'll do is that'll keep your jars from getting cloudy with the uh, mineral deposits. But I have to do one more thing before I can put this canner on the heat. And that is this American canner, all American canner, is a type of canner that does not use a gasket. So what I have to do is along this lip right here, I have to rub a little bit of olive oil along that entire lip. You want to use olive oil for this, and it just takes a thin amount where the metal is going to meet the metal inside this canner. And that really is all there is to it. And now, folks, I'm going to take this canner outside, and I'm going to get it on the heat and get it warming up because you do not want to put a cold jar into a hot water bath you'll end up cracking your jar so stand by a few moments and I'll come back and I will show you guys the next step in the process the next thing you need to do to can these potatoes is you need to add a teaspoon of salt per quart or a half a teaspoon per pint to each one of these jars I've already done all these and I have my next one measured out you just put your teaspoon of salt in, and now it's time to add the boiling water. I just did take this water off the heat, so it was boiling just a few moments ago. And I'm going to add this to my jar and maintain my one inch headspace. And once I do this, I'll be ready to wipe the any accidents and I'm going to bring this one forward so you guys can see what I'm doing here again with your distilled white vinegar you're going to take a rag you're going to get some of that white vinegar on your rag and you're just going to wipe the lip all the way around and with 
this does it takes off any contaminants, impurities, dust, dirt, anything like that that's on that, that lift. And it makes it to where your jar will seal. Now, I'm going to go ahead and make sure that there's no air bubbles in here. I got this, these jars packed pretty good, so I'll be fine. Take my tool, grab a lid. And you don't have to oil your lids anymore. But what I do is I just put mine in hot water to kind of soften up the, the rubbers. You take your lid and you put it on just finger tight. You don't want to really crank down on these because then you'll end up with a buckled lid and it won't seal properly. It's, it's just not good. So just finger tight. That's all you need to do. And now I'm just going to repeat the process. Okay guys, we're back outside and now it's time to put our jars into the canner. I have my canner on a propane burner. I have this cranked up, heating up. It's warming up nicely. It's not hot yet and that's okay. I'm gonna take my jars and I'm gonna set them in here. And I can get seven on the bottom rack. Back in my seat. Very quiet. Sure, baby. Okay, that's seven. And now you add your additional rack. Plus it, And I can add my extra quartz. So I'm going to go ahead and continue filling this up and then we'll be back and I'll show you the next step. Okay, guys, we have our canner full up now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put the lid on it and let this come up to temperature and there is a arrow on this lid that coincides with the notch on this all-american canner and you put it on a twist and it locks into place now what you do is you want even pressure all the way around so you lift up your your screw clamps Sometimes you have to loosen them up a little bit. And we're just going to tighten these down. Keeping in mind to try to keep an even width of this lid all the way around. And that looks good. So we're going to tighten these down opposite from each other. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to wait for this to start venting. Once this vents for 10 minutes, then I'll put my weighted gauge on and then we'll go ahead and begin the canning process. It's kind of hard to see on the video, but right now out of this vent pipe, we have a solid stream of steam coming out. Now I have set my timer for 10 minutes and after 10 minutes, I will go ahead and add our weighted gauge to start building up the pressure. Now at our altitude, because we are less than a thousand feet of elevation, we will use 10 pounds of pressure for this canning process. And this weighted gauge has marks on it for 5, 10, or 15 pounds of pressure. So in a few moments when our timer goes off and this is ready, I'll show you guys that process where I put the weighted gauge on and it starts to build up pressure. Okay, we have met our 10 minute mark for venting this, this canner. And now I'm gonna take the weighted gauge that shows the 10 PSI. And we're just gonna set this on our vent pipe. 
Now almost immediately you see that we started building up pressure. Now what's going to happen is when this gets up to 10 to 11 psi, this weighted gauge will start to jiggle on rock. And at that point I will turn the heat down on this canner and we'll maintain that jiggle process for 40 minutes. We are at our temperature of 242 degrees Fahrenheit. We're a little bit over 10 PSI. And if you see the jiggler over there, it's moving. So I'm going to back the heat off slightly until that jiggler just moves about four to six times a minute. It's dancing pretty good right now. I want it to move about four to six times a minute. And then we'll set our timer for 40 minutes. During this entire process, if at any time our pressure drops below 10 PSI, we have to start the whole process over. So this is not the time to go mow the yard or, or whatever. You kind of need to, to watch this and pay attention to what's going on. So after 40 minutes, I'll bring you guys back and I will show you the next step. Okay guys, it's been 40 minutes and I just did turn the, the propane off and now I'm just going to give this about 10 to 15 minutes to cool down. And once that gauge comes all the way down to zero, I will then take the, take the gauge off. So I'll show you that in a few moments. Okay. We have reached zero pressure, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to remove the weighted gauge and do this with the pot holder because it's hot. And you hear that steam come off? And now we're going to wait two minutes before we take the lid off. Hang on a minute, we'll be right back. And now you're going to open this lid away from you to let out any residual steam. There we go. Okay. I'm just going to set this over here for the time being. And we're going to take out. Our quartz. Now these will still be boiling. That's common. So I'll set it down here. See that? Now I can only take eight quarts at a time. Tell me I can hold on this tray and that not only that these things get kind of heavy too and I don't like messing with them when they're super hot because once I get these in the house these will sit in one spot for 24 hours you do not want to move them at all see now right here we have a problem with one this one here is siphoning I'm gonna set that there for just a minute that one will have to be reprocessed or just used immediately. That's probably what I'll do with it. So I'll just use it immediately. So. Okay. Stand by. We'll be back and I'll get the rest of these. Well, folks. That right there is the result. 14 quarts of pressure canned potatoes. I hope you guys learned something. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe. And until next time, thanks for watching.